On this worksheet, we're going to learn how to name benzene molecules. When a benzene molecule only has one substituent, then we just name it as a benzene with a substituent. It's pretty straightforward. Here are a couple of examples. If we have an isopropyl group on the benzene, we would call it isopropyl benzene. This NO2 group, which is a functional group we haven't seen yet, this is referred to as nitro, so this is nitrobenzene. Just like with other cyclic molecules, the location of the substituent is assumed always to be carbon number one, so it's not necessary to say one isopropyl benzene or one nitrobenzene. Let's practice with these two examples. And the one on the left, our substituent is bromine or bromo. So this would be called bromobenzene. And the one on the right, that is an ethyl group. So this would be called ethyl benzene. Now, occasionally, it's not very common, but occasionally the substituent is actually the longest carbon chain on the molecule if it has seven carbons or more. And again, this is super uncommon. But um, if the substituent is the longest carbon chain, then according to IUPAC rules, you have to name the, you know, the longest carbon chain is the parent chain of the molecule. So this is an eight carbon chain, which is longer than our six carbon benzene ring. So this molecule is named as an octane. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, with a benzene ring substituent on carbon number one. When benzene is a substituent, we refer to it as phenyl. So this is a molecule that has a phenyl group on carbon number one of an octane molecule. Here's an example for us to try. The longest carbon chain is right there. We want to number from left to right or from right to left to give our two substituents the smallest possible set of numbers. Looks like we want to go from left to right. So our substituents are on carbons three and four. Uh, carbon number three substituent is phenyl. Carbon number four is methyl. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M comes before P. So this would be four methyl, three phenyl. And a seven carbon chain is a heptane. Now there are nine substituents that we see on benzene rings that are uh, really commonly, like really frequently. And for these nine substituents, because they are so common and so frequently seen, we uh, have come up with common names for the benzene rings that have these particular nine substituents on them. These common names have actually become like IUPAC standard names. So you have to basically, I mean, you have to memorize all of these molecules and their names because they are the IUPAC name of the molecule. So when a benzene ring has just a methyl group on it, the name of the molecule is toluene. When it has an OH group on it, the name of the molecule is phenol not the same as phenol, phenol. If it has a methoxy group on it, an OCH3, then we name the molecule anisol. An, an NH2 group is aniline, and this specifically has to be two hydrogens. It can't be like nitrogen with some other alkyl group on there. It has to be NH2, we call it aniline. With just a carboxylic acid, a one carbon carboxylic acid, we call that benzoic acid with an aldehyde group is called benzaldehyde, and with a methyl ketone, so a ketone that just has one methyl group on it, we call this acetophenone. With um, this carbon-carbon double bond attached, we call this molecule styrene. And when there are two methyl groups on the ring, the molecule is named as xylene. The two methyl groups on the ring could be located in any relative position, so this would also be xylene, and this would also be called xylene. Now, it gets a little bit tricky when we have um, two substituents on the molecule, and one of those substituents comes from those nine molecules that I just showed you. For example, if we take a look at this, this much of the molecule right here is toluene. So if we ignore the bromine for just a second, a benzene ring with one methyl group on it is known as toluene. When we have a situation like this, we do name the molecule as toluene with a substituent on it, in this case a bromine substituent. So we don't name this as a benzene ring with a methyl and a bromine. 
Instead, we name it as a toluene with a bromine. This just gives us a shorter name, usually easier to pronounce, easier to write out, etc. Uh, when we have one of these common substituted benzenes, the position of the key functional group, so in this case, the key functional group is the methyl group. That's what makes this toluene. That carbon is going to be carbon number one by default, and then we number around the ring to give the other substituents the lowest possible set of numbers. So again, um, when we are using those common names of the nine molecules that are on the previous screen, we locate the position of the functional group that dictates that particular common molecule. We locate that as carbon number one. So this molecule is a toluene with a bromine on carbon number two. Uh, we call it 2-bromotoluene. This is, like I said, this is a little bit tricky, so we're going to practice it down here. So first thing that we have to do is find that common molecule. And it's going to be handy while you're learning this to keep these molecules close by so that you can reference these structures. What you want to do is look for these molecules in the molecule that you're trying to name. So do I have a toluene? Do I have a phenol? Do I have an anisol? What do I actually have present? So in this first example, we have right here a toluene. This is the toluene molecule. And because it's toluene, this methyl group is what makes it toluene. This is carbon number one. And that means we have a substituent on carbon number two. So this molecule's name is 2-ethyl-toluene. Let's practice with our next one. This is the molecule called styrene. Because that carbon-carbon double bond is what makes it styrene, it is carbon number one of the ring. And that means we have our substituent on carbon number three, three chlorostyrene. On our next one, this is the molecule called benzoic acid. Because the, carb the carboxylic acid group is what makes it benzoic acid, that carbon is carbon number one. And so this is a three methyl benzoic acid. This one um, could actually, if we really wanted to, I'm going to redraw it over here. This molecule could be named a little bit different. We could have chosen to focus on this portion of the molecule right here. That's a toluene. If we did that, this would be carbon number one, and then we would have this carboxylic acid group on carbon number three. At this point in the course, we haven't learned how to name carboxylic acid groups. So coming up with a name for this molecule would be tricky for you to do at this time because you don't know how to do it. And so that's why I choose to name the molecule as a benzoic acid because we do know how to name this little guy down here. Here's our last one. Um, our molecule is a styrene again. This is what makes it a styrene, so that gets to be carbon number one. In this, we have a bromine on carbon number three, three bromostyrene. So this just takes some practice and keeping the names of those nine molecules handy while you're learning um, all of these names. Now, another option that we have when we're naming a di-substituted benzene ring, so this, would, this only works when you have only two substituents on the benzene ring, instead of locating the, rel the, the relative position of the substituents using our numbers, you know, two, three, four, whatever, we can locate the position of the substituents using these prefixes ortho, meta, and para, which we abbreviate with a single letter. Here are a couple of examples. So here is the xylene molecule. Remember I told you the xylene molecule is one that has two methyl groups, but the two methyl groups could be relative, any relative position around the benzene ring. Because there's a lot of variety in, in the xylene molecule, meaning that the methyl groups could be side by side, or they could be separated by one carbon, or they could be opposite from each other, we do, when we name xylene, we do have to give the relative position of the two methyl groups. 
if we use numbers in the first molecule, the methyl groups are on carbons number one and two. We could also refer to this relative position as ortho. So ortho is when the two substituents are on adjacent carbons side by side. We write the name just using the single letter abbreviation O-xylene, but we pronounce it ortho-xylene. We don't pronounce it O-xylene. When the substituents are separated by three, or excuse me, separated by one carbon, this relative position right here is called meta. So this molecule, we would write its name out, M xylene, but we would pronounce it meta xylene, we call this meta. And when the substituents are directly across from each other on the ring in positions one and four, we call that orientation para. We write just the letter P, but we pronounce it para xylene. So what we're gonna do to practice this ortho meta para notation, we're gonna go back up to these molecules and we're gonna just identify them as being ortho or meta or para substituted. Again, when your substituents are directly um, on carbons that are directly attached to each other side by side, this relative position we call ortho, we would just use the letter O, but we say ortho, ortho ethyl toluene ortho is the same thing as a 1 2 disubstituted this where our substituents are separated by just one carbon atom this is meta we use the letter m but we pronounce it meta meta chloro styrene and again meta we use when our substituents are on carbons 1 and 3 um, and I didn't have a lot of variety here. I kind of ran out of creativity. This is also a meta. So this is meta methyl benzoic acid. And this one is also meta, meta bromo styrene. And we'll just make a note over here, even though we don't have any examples, para is when our substituents are on carbons one and four.